Welcome. You're listening to A Sister's Love. It's time to talk about mental health and wellness with your host, Sharon Bryant. We'll be exploring different topics related to mental health and breaking down the stigma around it. If you're looking for empowerment and inspiration on your journey to mental wellness, you're in the right place. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to a Sisters Love podcast. I am your host, Sharon Bryant. This comes from my brand, God's Best Friend. Today, we have such a treat for you. One of our sisters, her name is Bethany McKenzie, is going to have the opportunity to share what she would like to share. So, good morning, Bethany. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Great, great. So to our, our sisters that are listening or our audience, Bethany, can you tell me a little little about yourself? Sure. I am my Bethany I my dog Catherine Graham and go on giving me person. I have four children from let's see, the youngest is sixteen, the oldest, my stepdaughter is thirty two, and I have three grandchildren. Wonderful. What do you do for a living, Bethany? Well, I will tell you, I'm actually because of like just the abusive trauma I've gone through, mm-hmm. and just that need for validation, I have sought skill after skill after skill. So I'm not kind of confused as to what I actually do. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, my my background is in HR and payroll, and then I have really no business in administration. And then um, just for personal needs, I had to start freelancing on the side on top of my career. So I moved into marketing. Right now, and I'm working towards like trying to be consultants because I do believe that employers play such a very big role in employees' lives that they can help them overcome, you know, trauma and anxiety. Yes. But to do that, they need to understand where like their process is not working. That way, they have that range of best employees. Very good. So let's tell the audience how did we meet, Bethany? Well, like I said, I, I started freelancing, so I was working with a creative agency called Grand Nuts, and I was a project manager for one of your projects, and you we were looking for a blog or your website, and we started talking, and I told you my story, and she asked us if I would be willing to write my testimony for you. Yes. So, Bethany, you have, you, you have the floor, and now can you share with us what you would like us to know? Sure. Ever see, I made very young, just things just did not work out. It is a very trying grief for me. So that was pretty traumatic trying to ever come back. You know, when you're 18, you don't have to sort of have the skills to manage a relationship. So I found another person, and from there, she found a series of just cyclical abuse. And so, you, you know, it's just understanding, you know, why find yourself in those relationships over and over again? Now I suffered homelessness, food insecurity. I mean, the man, he tried to kick me in my stomach when I was pregnant. And it took me, my son was three weeks old, and I had to leave because there were no teeth stand or there wasn't a place for me to care for my newborn son or his three children. So I had to leave. And I found myself in a battered women's shelter. I reported him to the school. And so I could get help for his children. But it took me a very long time just to actually remove myself from that situation. And if it weren't for that, but like my family and friends, especially my family, you know, I, I don't know that I would have survived that situation at all, much less my children, my child. So then later, I remained and I mean, we had a lot of issues. We suffered during addictions as well. So I thought I was putting my life in order. It didn't necessarily happen that way. So a lot of ups and downs. But, um, my main goal so was to try and teach my children how to break out of that that cycle, you know, because we don't want our children repeating the cycles over and over. We're trying to teach them the skills that they needed so that they can be productive adults. They have to talk we very much you want in your friendship and you don't want to reach people about abuse and trauma and mental awareness and just, just really helping people find the, the way to break out of those cycles because you don't really necessarily realize it's a cycle or that it's happening to you until you just kind of wake up one more day and you're like, wow, why does this keep happening to me over and over again? So I think it's you know, just really important 
Well, I appreciate that. Yes, I do agree with that. And appreciate your story. I feel I feel the pain. But I it's want... hard. Yeah. I because like like I said, I saw tremors. I you know, I showed myself nightmares, just times I just can't function. So like being able to have rail schedule, finding those resources that will help me just to work around those tremors that have been generally impactful for me. Knowing when to listen to myself, when when swear that I'm not feeling right. Those are really important. Because you, you don't want to live your life stuck in fear. You want to be able to move forward. You need to be able to move forward. Right? And so I think it's just really important to understand where your triggers are at. Just checking in with yourself. Practicing your self-care. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear it countless times. You know, all the self-help careers you know, out there. But it's like really a just understanding of where you're at, where you've been, and what you can do to really yeah. overcome the situation. And it's not an easy journey at all. Sometimes you don't already see the stories through all the chains. You have to kind of just be able to step back and see that big picture. And I am really appreciate where you've been and where, where life can probably take you. And the type of impact you can have on other people just to share your story. Because you never know who's going to to hear that story. Absolutely. I agree with you. And I want them to know that, you know, there is a, a brighter side. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And so while we're sitting here speaking on your story, let us know where you are now. What the... Go ahead. I feel like God is pushing me a lot to really write about this. So yeah, it's been weighing heavily. And it's like, it's also scary because it's like when you're like a very to a very hardy person and you're just going to give us like the greater world knows, you know, people don't stop the question. I mean, you're asking about the question, the reality. So it's, it's kind of a scary thing. So it's like, I know I'm being bridged. It's like the Joan and the well, basically. <laughs> I said, I know I'm being pushed into this direction. Yeah. So it's like, just that fear because, well, people don't necessarily understand their collectiveness. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's kind of where I'm at now. It's just really just embracing my story, really embracing where I've been. Really embracing wherever I am and what kind of impact I can have on people. Because ultimately, I believe everybody should just be able to see the light in the world or to see mother and to have that light and love in their life and not to have to live in fear. I love that. I love that. That's an excellent statement. And you're doing something great right now. You have, I believe, a blog on Facebook. Can you tell it? Can you well, tell it? I never- they look right there in the blog. I just have the one blog I wrote for you. Yeah. And then I'd be able to, you know, having some more posts out there. I'm just really trying to start to share my message. Because it's kind of fearful because, you know, you're, you're, you're being vulnerable. Yeah. It's hard to be vulnerable because you don't want to feel judged. Yeah. People are going to judge. And I'm like, well, I would never have done that. You don't know that you would never have done that. You would never know. Yeah. Or you would never, you know, you don't know to you've been in that position. So it's. So I've been working on getting those posts out there. I would really like to write more for people in this area. I would really like to write more about relationship, and your, like, especially your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your significant other, and with your children. And it's like, I do believe that offers are important messages. So I've been working more, writing more, and putting more posts out there to really just kind of help. Can you give us the information, or would you like to share the information so others I, can come and stay? I they are welcome to still follow me on Instagram or our Facebook. It's just that thing they can see. And then I'm on LinkedIn as well, so they can find me there. I don't have an official website yet, just my social media platforms. Okay. And I want you all to know Bethany is such a significant person in my life. She's a significant sister. When I brought her my story, and I really didn't know how to express it. Bethany wrote my story and she did such an excellent job in doing so. And we have been in touch with each other since then. I believe the God's Best Friend website has been up and developed since 2019. And we we just, we keep in touch with each other. I wanted her to be able to share 
I want you all to know the importance of sharing your story. It's just like she said, you never know who you may help. You never know who you may impact. You just never know. And we don't force you to do so. We invite you to do so that others may hear because it's just like the word said, we're overcome by the testimonies of the saints. And that is the purpose and the reason why we do a Sisters Love podcast is to give the opportunity for other sisters to share their story. And I so appreciate Bethany, we, again, we're still in touch with each other. We both have children. Before we end the podcast, I want to ask her, how are the children doing and, and what did they go through in the midst of it and where they are now? They are doing really well. And they were trying to get really, really ugly at home. And um, I know in terms of fear for my sir and just the rational well-being of all of our children. We'll see the eldest. She is the my stepdaughter, she is a very prominent creator for the trucking industry here locally. My son, he is a machinist and working on some very high profile projects. A production. Some for aerospace and engineering and yeah. so type project. I can't go through a lot of details that make it forbidden. Yeah. But then he's also creating like his own his own business on the side and remodeling business. My 20 year old daughter, she is um a manager at Walmart. And they're getting ready to come out her again. Yeah. She's on the fast track to Rich probably on the corporate world at high levels. And then my youngest of the state, she just started her first job. She is actually a very big mental health advocate herself. And she's been doing online schooling, virtual and I she has worked so far ahead that she'll probably be going for school for this year, probably by December, if she keeps up the way she's going. Wow. And the reason why I ask that question, because when we are going through, sometimes our kids feel it as what feel it as well. And right. the, the purpose of us being healed is also for our children to be healed as well. Because when we feel good and we're doing well, then we can help others in in, right. in their health, in their in their well being. So that was the purpose of asking that. And we're at the point that we towards the end of this podcast, and I want to allow Bethany to give her last statement. What would you like to share with our audience? Well, um, I thank you for that. I'm um, sure I do believe very much mm-hmm. that we are a very good impact for future generations. And so it's like you said, our children are pretty much what we, we kind of live for, right? Yeah, we sacrifice a lot for our children. So understanding that what we may be having right now there is a light out there which will not be the emergency to generations. So yeah, our, our messages are important, not just for ourselves, but for our children and then the other children that we might be able to take up there. Amen. So we're not leaving no one out. This podcast is meant for everyone. And I want to thank Bethany for sharing her story. I wanted you all to meet this wonderful person that I met that told my story so beautifully and she's still doing things for us for us today. And so this is the end of this episode, which is episode four of a sister's love podcast. It's about testifying. It's about sharing your story. And so until the next time, if any of you would like to share your story, please leave a comment or you can reach us on godsbestfriend.com. There is a section where you can leave your comment. And if you like to donate to this cause, please do it on the website, godsbestfriend.com. Until the next episode, we love you. We God loves you. And share. Just, just tell what is going on with you to impact others in their healing process. So. Have a wonderful day, and we shall talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of A Sister's Love. We hope that our discussion was able to provide you with some insight and inspiration. If you ever need someone to talk to, our doors are always open. For support on your journey, visit us online at www.godsbestfriend.com. Until next time, remember, together we are not alone.